Okay, so we're going to run in, we're going to uh, start with the first step. Uh, we've got a pound and a half of clay, and you want to make sure you've weighed that well. A pound and a half of clay, and we're going to plop it right into the center here. We're going to, with a little bit of force, pow. Give it a pat on the head there to stick it. And then we're going to move into the first step, which is called centering. Now I'm going to break the, the process of throwing into uh, about six easy steps. So we're going to do each step one at a time and show you how, how it works. Um, <clears throat> so Cassie will zoom in a bit on my hands here so you can uh, see the, the centering process. So first thing you want to do is get the clay wet. Uh, always keep the, waist, uh, keep the clay slippery. Uh, it should never be grabbing at your hands or, or you shouldn't be feeling a lot of friction uh, that, that might be heating up. So keep it slimy wet like this. So first thing, get it nice and wet with your sponge. So the water, the, the sponge is a tool for moving water around. So let's look at our, our arm positions next. I'm going to take my left hand, my left arm, I'm going to park my elbow right into my hip bone right here so that when I lean forward, see how my, my palm goes forward? I don't even have to really exert any any effort with my with my arm. It's just my leaning forward is causing this palm to move forward. So I'm going to make a contact point with my palm here. I'll take my right hand, and this is a little bit like a karate chop. I'm going to park this, this hand right on top here and lock it into my other hand. Notice where my elbow is of my right hand right here. So I'm forming a triangle, and sometimes I call the connection point where your hands meet point three. So I've got point one, point two, point three, like this. So I'm going to get the wheel up pretty fast. This is a pretty good clip, not too slow. And I'm going to start by adding some top pressure. I lean on top here, see it push down. And then I'm going to, let me show you the contact point here. See where I'm making contact on the, the meaty part of my palm there. And then I'll lean in with my left hand. And when I lean in, the clay has to obey, it goes up. See it moving up into a cone? Take a look at where I'm making contact right here. See this spot right here on my palm? So this is a contact point. So we're, we're going to be alternating between these two contact points, between top pressure and side pressure. So here it goes. I'm going to go up and down a few times. We call that wheel wedging. And it's going to help to, to condition the clay and also get it into center. And by center, I mean that, that the clay is no longer oscillating and, and moving around. Uh, it almost looks like it's still in terms of its shape. So here we go. Push down, top pressure. Lean in, side pressure. So both hands are making contact the whole time. I'm just relaxing pressure each time I switch to one hand. Both hands still have to add some pressure, but one is dominant for, uh, for each motion. So push down on top, dominant, and now side the side palm there is still holding on. It's still adding some contact. Lean in, rises up. This is good practice. Go up and down several times until you get comfortable with that. So I'm pressing down onto the wheel head, onto the back at the same time. You may notice there's a blue line here that's formed because I'm pressing down at the same time. Contact point again is right here and right here. You're going to get a, a layer of goo. Just wipe that off on your, scrape it off on your bucket. Okay, so when the clay is approximately twice as wide as it is tall, uh, you're, you're centered and ready to move into the next step, which we call opening it up. Okay, we're centered. The next step, opening it up. Here's how it works. Hand position. Left hand <coughs> is on the wheel. Three fingers of my left hand are actually touching the wheel head. My thumb is resting just back from center. My right hand, I'm going to take three fingers of my right hand, I'm going to press, put them on my thumb, and I'm going to use my thumb as a digging tool to push down into the clay. So I'm going to get the wheel up to speed. I'm going to begin pressing by making a slight indentation in the, in the center, a little tiny bowl shape. Don't go straight for the bullseye because sometimes if you go straight for the bullseye, you get off center a little bit and it wiggles on you and wobbles. So start by making a slight depression in the center here. Take your sponge, squeeze a little water, make a little swimming pool. And then start pushing the thumb towards the bottom. Here we go. Pushing down, pushing down. When you feel like you're getting close, 
mop out the water with your sponge and take your needle tool and we're going to do a thickness test. We want to see how thick it is at the very bottom here. I'll take the needle, I'm going to push it into the clay, it'll be fine. I'm going to run my finger down until it touches the clay, so I'm using this as a depth gauge. I pull it out like this and I look at it and I should be looking at something a little bit beefier than a quarter of an inch. And that's about a quarter inch. So this is, this is pretty good. If it was a little too high, if it was closer to half, that means I need to push my thumb down a little further to get it to go, to go a little bit deeper. But I think we're in good shape. Okay, so that's one step, opening it up. The next step, step three, we call putting in the bottom. And there's actually two parts to putting in the bottom. So here's how your hands are going to look and how your body changes. Both thumbs are going to drop down into that, that opening that I just made, the hole we just dug. Elbows are going to come way out like this onto my laps, and these fingers are going to touch at the top right here. Can you see the triangle I'm making? So I've got two triangles. I've got the triangle created by my elbows and point three where my hands are touching, but also I've got a smaller triangle right here. This is a really stable configuration. So I'm going to spin the wheel, and what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to kind of show you upside down what I'm doing. I'm going to take my thumbs, can you see me here? And then I'm going to curl my thumbs back until the wall of that donut shape of clay uh, becomes vertical. And once I have a vertical wall, then I'm going to stretch that vertical out like a great big rubber band uh, to bring that wall out so it looks like a nice big uh, round donut. Okay, here we go, let's try it. First step, just curl the thumbs back. I'll stop right here so you can see that. So now let's see how the wall is now straight. This big donut shape has got a straight wall now, instead of the, the V-shape wall. So that's the first step, get it into the straight wall. Then we're gonna stretch out the, uh, the donut. Now here's a key point to remember when you're doing this. Keep a little bit of pressure down on top of the donut while you're doing this. Here's what not to do. Don't lift your hands way up like this and just make contact with your thumbs because now you don't have any pressure on the top of the ring. Okay, don't lift it up like that. Keep your hands down. Hands should be flat on the wheel head. Again, so that's going to let your, the knuckles of your thumb press down for a little top pressure because we're trying to control this ring so it doesn't get too mushroomy, too mushroom or flared out. So now I lean over this, I start to stretch out that big ring, here it comes, slowly, take, take your time, don't rush. I'll stop about right here. How do you know where to stop? Here's the general rule. When we take the measurement from the center of the outside diameter, this ring should be about one third of that diameter. So here's one third, and then on the inside is two thirds. So that's about the right place to stop for a cylinder. Next we're gonna uh, do part B of the uh, putting in the bottom, which I call spatulization technical term here. So my hand, my left hand is the spatula. I'm going to press on top of my left hand uh, just behind the fingernails. Don't press right on the fingernails, you'll tend to dig in. Otherwise it'll come back just behind the fingernails there because that's going to put pressure on the pads of your fingers here as opposed to the very tips of them. And I'm going to press down on the inside to flatten this out. Start in the center and slowly move up to 12 o'clock. So think of this like a clock face. We're moving up to 12 o'clock, back into the center, up to 12 o'clock. Just move slowly. Let the wheel do the work. The spinning of the wheel is going to do most of the work for you. When it looks like it's uh, reasonably flat, go ahead and take your needle tool again and do another thickness test. Push the needle tool in, run your finger down until it touches, and check it again. We're looking again for a you know, beefy quarter inch, and that looks like it's in good, uh, is in the right thickness. Okay, so we, we finished three steps. We finished centering. We finished putting in the, uh, digging a hole, and now we finished putting in the bottom, which uh, is comprised of opening it up and spatulizing or uh, flattening the bottom. So at this stage, we've got this nice donut ring shape that we're going to move on to the next step. We call the next step volcanoes, the volcano step. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to again think of this ring as a clock. And I'm going to put my left hand, middle finger, and thumb. So when you're doing this, make sure you're following along exactly in terms of the hand position. Middle finger and thumb are right across from each other at 5 o'clock. You able to see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so it's not, it's not index finger 
and thumb because that's going to really have to that's going to make your wrist really ramp. So it's middle finger and thumb. See how that makes my wrist relax a little more when I do this. I have to bend it. So middle finger and thumb, almost like you're going to be picking this ring up, but you're not going to do you're not going to add any pressure. I call the left hand the passenger, and I call the right hand the driver. Here's why the right hand is called the driver. I'm going to isolate the pad of my index finger on my right hand by putting my thumb right behind that index finger. See the little triangle that forms here? That's strong. Don't do the orphan finger where it's, that finger's all alone. That's not strong enough. Put the thumb right next to that index finger. And then these three fingers here, let them park behind the thumb and the index finger. So here's what it looks like, kind of like a little, a little birdie. Tweet. And then the driver is going to press on this donut. Now let me do this a couple times just to show you the physics that are involved. We've got the spinning wheel, which is centrifugal force. But you know from your study of physics that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I press on this ring, tell me which way it's going to go. What do you think, Cass? Hmm? If I press on this ring, which way is it going to go? Up. It's going to go up. So watch, watch. I'm going to just isolate this finger all by itself. I press on that ring. It starts to rise up. Notice that the right hand is following the ring all the way up. So I have to be really attentive to staying near the rim of that ring. So as I push on it, physics says it has to go up, and I follow it just like a, <clears throat> you know, like a tide rising. I follow that uh, ring as it comes up. So this is a rudimentary volcano. Uh, <clears throat> notice the throwing rings on here are really tight. They're less than a quarter of an inch wide. The throwing ring is the path that's left by your finger. Let me put it back down, and I'll show you what the left hand does by itself. Then we'll put the two together for the <clears throat> full step. Okay, so left hand, again, remember, middle finger and thumb. It's going to be working in concert with the driver finger, uh, but it has a job of its own to do. I'm going to park the, the index finger right next to that thumb. See right here? So these hands are now touching. That's point three, closing the triangle. But the left hand by itself is going to do this. It squeezes gently. So I've got this nice big ring here. When I spin the wheel, the left hand is going to gently squeeze and taper this ring until it's about as thick as a slice of bread, which is about 3 eighths of an inch. So here's the left hand all by itself. Squeeze, 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 taper, taper, taper. So that left hand has to monitor the thickness as it's coming up. Taper, taper, taper. Slice of bread. See that? Stop. So we're going to put these two hand motions together for the full step. So that's what the left hand does. It tapers the clay up and helps to make the wall consistent. Let's put it back down and we'll do both together. We'll have time to practice this in class too, so we'll, we'll uh, practice each of these steps one by one. So here's the two steps put together. Quick refresher, five o'clock, middle finger and thumb, index finger, braced, make the little bird, Park the index finger at the base of that ring, and then begin pressing on the ring. As it rises, you follow it. You stay right up near the rim, taper, 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 cone shape, driving, 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 stop when it's thick as a slice of bread, release slowly. You got a volcano. After you've done the volcano, compress the rim for strength. Here's how you do that. Left hand supports the wall. All you do is press down gently with the right finger there, and that's going to compress the rim. To to strengthen it. Okay, next step <clears throat> is actually uh, about three steps. Uh, I call this raising the bubble. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a notch at the base of this thick volcano shape. Excuse me, itchy nose. <clears throat> and we're going to raise it up uh, to start thinning the wall out and getting the, the cylinder taller. Now, I want to mention at this stage that uh, the volcano is thicker at the base than it is at the top. So what, what we're doing essentially is we're stealing clay away from the base and gradually moving it up into the wall. And the base is wider now uh, than the ultimate cylinder will be. So we're starting with a wider base, grabbing clay, moving it up, grabbing clay, moving it up. So the base will get narrower with each pole that we do. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to drop. <coughs> three fingers of my left hand into the inside the vessel, my index finger is going to stay out of the way. 
it's pointing gracefully out of the way. The thumb is down here on the outside of the wall, and it's going to be my point three. I'm going to use this as a way to contact my hands together to form this triangle shape, and my index finger is going to park right next to the thumb. So I'll spin the wheel a little bit, and here's what happens. I press down against the wheel head, see the blue line form? I slowly press in with the tip of my thumb, with my index finger. See the point of contact here? See the clay building up on it? So it's the tip of the index finger, and I'm making a notch that is about a fingertip deep. You'll see the shadow there, this lovely little shadow there. That's what you're looking for. Now the shadow here has given, given us a ledge that the outside finger can lift. <clears throat> so, quick distinction here. I'm pressing sideways when I make the notch, and I'm going to turn the finger to lift against the no notch when I'm ready to raise the bubble. Let me do a, a one pull so you can see what it looks like. Here we go. I start to lift. You see the, what looks like a bubble rising up? I continue with the cone shape. So you want to maintain the cone shape so that centrifugal force doesn't wind up flaring it out at the top too soon. So the job of the right hand is to lift and to make sure that you're keeping the cone shape. Now the cone will get gradually narrower as you approach the cylinder, <coughs> but we don't want it flaring out too soon. <coughs> Pardon me. So you may have noticed from that pole that there was a, a bulge of clay that was rising up. We call that that bubble. Now here's the absolute secret to throwing to make the wall go up. On the inside of, of the wall, my, my inside finger is actually sitting in that little bulge there, that little bubble. My outside hand is, slight, is underneath the bubble, that little bulge. So here's the offset finger position that's the secret to making it work. It needs to be offset. You might think it's, they, they should be right across from each other, but in fact, the way it works to get height is for the inside finger to be slightly above, the outside finger is slightly below. So the outside finger is lifting the bubble up, and the inside hand's job is to make sure the bubble doesn't disappear. The bubble has to stay there in order to give that right hand something to lift against. If it disappears, then you're simply pressing the clay, which will cause it to expand and flare out. So let's go ahead and do another pull. It's taller now, you see. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can reach inside. If I, as long as I can reach the bottom of the pot, bottom of the cylinder, I'm going to let my elbow stay on my lap. If it's too tall, I'm going to have to raise my elbow up and drop my index finger in, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I can still reach the bottom, and I want my fingers basically right across from each other. If we could see through this with x-ray vision, these fingers would be right across from each other, inside and outside. So the second step, the first step of the pull is repeated, press down against the wheel head, slowly push in. Your inside hand will feel the clay moving. You want to be able to sense how the clay has moved. So at this stage, I'm going to add water. And again, I, I may forget to remind you of this, but anytime you feel the clay grabbing, just touch your hand to your bucket of water so your hand's covered with water. Or squeeze a little water from your sponge onto the surface there so it's good and slippery. So you see the shadow again. I'm going to turn my finger again so I can lift against that shadow. The left hand immediately adds a little bit of pressure to tell me where it is. So the outside hand always knows where its position is. See the bubble rising up? Take your time. Take your time on up, completely up to the rim. They both get to the rim, and you pause and release. So when you make a pull like this, the outside hand is slightly below. So the inside hand gets to the rim first. Go ahead and let the outside finger finish off the, the last bit of that cylinder by catching up with the inside finger. So they'll pause at the rim to catch up. This is looking downright cylindrical now, isn't it? It's mighty close. There's still enough clay down there. You can see from the, from the thickness, there's still enough clay here that I can get more to go into the wall to get taller. Your goal for this assignment is a six inch cylinder. All right, I can't reach into the inside anymore, right? My fingers just aren't long enough. Maybe yours are, but I can't reach in. So I have to do something called letting the elbow fly. So here's what that does. Instead of resting my elbow on my lap to form a triangle, I'm going to let my elbow fly way up in the air. Index finger is now going to have to hide behind the middle finger and go inside the pot, go inside the cylinder. Thumb is over here and is now going to make a bridge to my other hand to make point three. Avoid doing this. Do not do the long distance. 
elbow. Don't lean back and try to do it. It's really important that you get this tight V shape in your elbow when you do this so that when you lift up with your back, see that? The hand moves up with you. Whereas here, there's going to be a fair amount of wobble if you try to lift up like this. So you're going to let the body, the body help you with the lift. All right, I can collar this in a little bit if it flares out. Let's go ahead and make the pull. Here we go. Hands touching, see the bridge? Also, look how much weight I'm putting on my right thigh here. I'm leaning over a lot more. Before I was doing this, now I'm leaning over. I push in to make that notch. There's the shadow, see it? Get the water, and then I start to lift. Here we go, lift up. This time I'm pretty much going straight. I'm looking for cylinder at this stage. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Catch up at the rim, pause, relax, release. A little compression for strength. Uh, and now you have something that's pretty cylindrical. Uh, notice the throwing rings are reasonably consistent in terms of their width. Uh, and about a quarter of an inch is, a, is the maximum you want at this stage. You don't want really big wide throwing rings in the beginning because you want to be able to have control. Okay, so there's a couple of steps you're going to need to do to finish the cylinder. One is, go ahead and take your sponge, squeeze it out, hold it with your fingertips, and mop out the, the lake that's in there. Let me take a couple of squeezes here. So squeeze out the water. If you leave the water in there, it will lead to cracking uh, at the base of your cylinder. So squeeze the water out. 